Hello everyone, my name is Noemi and this is my first video on this channel. Today I am going to show you a timeless video of my latest painting and I will talk a bit about the painting process, about myself and the inspirations behind the painting. So a few words about myself and why I started this channel and what are my expectations. Originally I am a pianist and I have been studying music since I was a kid. Besides that, I was always drawing and painting. My head is always full of new ideas for making art. I am mostly self-taught. I studied illustration and graphic design besides music university, but I had very limited time for it, so I didn't finish the two-year-long course. However, the love for art stuck with me and I had to realize that I never want to stop creating art and maybe one day I can be a full-time artist. I still have a long way to go. I started this channel so I can show you videos of my creative process and build a community of people with similar interests. I didn't fully stop making music either and all the background music you can hear in this video is played by me. These are medieval and renaissance era pieces and I will leave the titles in the description. I am still figuring things out about making videos, so there might be parts when I am talking less and you can just watch the painting come to life while listening to the music. I think that I was talking long enough about myself, so let's get back to the painting itself. I was working with a round canvas, which was a challenge regarding the composition. I took up using acrylic paint about 4 years ago, which isn't a very long time if you want to become a master of it, but most of the time I prefer having a dark base, so I covered the whole canvas with black paint, which is the atmosphere of the picture better. I am definitely not the most skilled artist when it comes to acrylic paint and my painting process is more intuitive rather than planned. That is why this isn't a painting tutorial or, or a guide on how to use this media. I wanted the landscape to have dark mountains in the background. The bottom half of the canvas was meant to be a lake with stars reflecting on the surface. The entire sky is clouded so there is no clear source of lighting. After the main elements of the landscape were done, I started adding more details. I only used shades of blue, purple and grey. As you follow this phase of the painting process, let's talk about the things that inspire me most of the time. Like a lot of other artists, sometimes I struggled with art blocks or felt like my art was not as good as I wanted it to be. When art in itself doesn't inspire me, I turn to other things in my life that are important. This can be music, literature, memories, places, literally anything. I always try to find uh, that spark which helps me get back to making art again, to have that intense feeling that I need to, I have to create again. I know how easy it is to lose that spark since the world we live in is currently really harsh for all the creative people and as adults we have many other responsibilities so sometimes it feels impossible to go back to the safe place of creating something. I am not a therapist and definitely not going to give you life advice. This is why I only talk about things that help me personally. Music takes up a special place in my life and besides playing the piano, sometimes the guitar or rarely the harpsichord, I always listen to music. Weirdly enough, I only listen to classical music on special occasions. Unfortunately, it started to feel like a job in the last few months, but, but there was a time when the life of composers, stories behind certain pieces and history of music in general was enough to make drawings based on these things. Unfortunately, being a classical musician can feel like you are put into a very small box and and I left behind many of my interests to fit into that box. I think that this is true for all kinds of careers where other people have very high expectations of you. However, in the past years my love for gothic rock and metal music came back and it made me realize that I prefer making art with darker, mysterious themes, sometimes dealing with deeper, painful emotions or stories. This isn't the case now with this specific painting, but I will talk about that soon. I like reading books, mostly classical literature, fantasy or poems. Many of my older artworks are illustrations of literature I read. I have very visual imagination and, and every time I read, I picture everything that is written. Many times when I make sketches for future artworks, I don't just draw things, but write some words about the colors, the mood, or I write down the thoughts with, which led me to the painting which I imagined. My sketchbook are extremely messy, maybe one day I will show some sketchbook pages with you here. 
It may feel like a cliche, but nature can also help when it comes to the lack of ideas. I like to draw in my sketchbook when I am outside. I take a lot of photos of nature, they could end up as great reference photos. The part of nature which is my main source of inspiration are the sky and the stars. Painting galaxies and astronomical stuff gives me a lot of freedom with all those abstract shapes and otherworldly colors. I have a collection of NASA pictures on my laptop, I just can never get bored of painting the stars. Finally, we arrived at that phase when I'm painting the unicorn, which is the center of this painting. My main inspiration for this piece was a series of tapestries called the Hunt of the Unicorn. They were created during the Renaissance era in the South Netherlands. There is a lot of mystery surrounding the identity of the creator and the original owner of the tapestries, and there are many interpretations of the message behind these artworks. The symbols used could represent Christ's suffering or a celebration of marriage. The origin of this mythical creature dates back to antiquity. They were found depicted on the mosaics of the ancient Persian Persepolis, and despite not making an appearance in Greek mythology, they believed that these creatures existed and lived in India. These creatures gained a complex symbolism in the medieval era. According to the Physiologus, a late antiquity Christian text, the unicorn would be captured and tamed by a virgin. This allegory could represent either Christ's life or courtly love. Back to the tapestries, there were seven wall hangings with these titles. The first was The Start of the Hunt, second, The Unicorn at the Fountain, third, The Unicorn Attacked, fourth, The Unicorn Defending Himself, fifth, The Unicorn Captured by the Virgin, which was found in two fragments, sixth, The Unicorn Killed and Brought to the Castle, and the last, the seventh, The Unicorn in Captivity. I think that the seventh tapestry is the most popular among these tapestries. The tapestries have a history of appearing in other pieces of media, such as the 1993 film The Sacred Garden or in Adventure Time. They inspired the animated movie The Last Unicorn directly. I painted the unicorn entirely white, uh, just like in the tapestries, so it feels like it's glowing and it can grab the attention of the viewer easily as it's contrasting the dark background.
I wanted to add another medieval era inspired detail, so I painted Gothic style ruins in the background. I am very fond of Gothic architecture, there is something transcendental and elegant about it that I can't really put into words. It is stunning to think about that it took tens of hundreds of years to complete buildings like these cathedrals and they transcend time. People who lived in the 11th century believed that the world will end soon and this was the way to show their fear of God. Probably most of these architects didn't live long enough to see their work completed. In the last phase of the process I added more details to the landscape, the unicorn and the ruins and painted the arm of the reflected galaxy with golden acrylic paint. To be honest, this is my favorite part, even though it took a lot of time to paint each star individually. Thank you for watching this video and drop a comment if you have any questions or additional pieces of information regarding any topics I have talked about. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Have a nice day, bye!